and they did the, the world's easiest uh, outreach and biggest HIPAA violation ever. They literally took the names of the vulnerable people and they went, they took great big vans and they went under the bridge and they were like, you know, Barbara, you know, Smith. And she was like, yes. And she went and got in her van. And I have video footage of this stuff. And they just called out the names and people got in the vans and drove off to hotels and then they got put in their housing. And then the last people that were left actually stuck around to help clean up. And so, um, that's what it looks like now. So it, as far as you could see, that was tense. Um, so our, th th we never, six years ago, would have even imagined that we might be able to do this. But our next adventure is 100,000 Homes campaign. It's to house 100,000 of the most chronically homeless and vulnerable people in the country over the next three years. And we draw our inspiration from the Institute for Healthcare Improvements uh, campaign to, ha to save 100,000 lives. And we really, we think we can do this. We're, we're 1,000 down, 99,000 to go. Um, but that the, that the time is ripe for this major systems change. And we're not allowing ourselves to be afraid of the budgetary situation. In fact, it's even more urgent because a lot of these people are really, really expensive and we need to just tell the story that way. Um, and we're, we're wrapping in community now as an important stakeholder. You, we, we realize we can't always leave it to the government and the nonprofits to do the right thing. We want to wrap in citizens and have them be part of the solution as well. So that's part of this right now. Um, and we gotta, we gotta tackle the fear and move fear into hope and people, people need to understand that they can make a difference and that's exactly what we're putting our energy on right now. So uh, this is some graffiti across the street from my house in Brooklyn, uh, but I get to look at it every day. And I guess I would just, to wrap this up, and you guys have been a very patient audience, but I would just encourage you to reflect while you're out by the pool um, on, you know, if you could have just $75,000 to do something that the system doesn't allow you to do right now, what would you do? What's the greatest idea you heard while you're at this conference that was $75,000? You know, you could get an AmeriCorps or two monkeys going on right away. And what is the hardest part of the hard problem in your world? And I would encourage you to go running towards that like a person with their hair on fire. Uh, and what can you do to increase the sense of urgency in your, in your field? How can you make it a life or death issue um, uh, and what can you do to always keep your compass pointed on the reason why you were doing this work in the first place, on the people who are asking, like Liz, you know, asking you to help cure them? Yeah, you know, what can you do to help turn, you know, help Liz remember that she's really Laura and help her bring that out in herself? And so I'll just leave it with that and say I look forward to working with all of you someday down the road as we bust down these silos and work to make the world a better place. And just, uh, again, thank you for your patience with all these stories. And uh, be careful if you uh, go off the trail too far.